Welcome everyone to the upcoming webinar entitled Chromatin Immunoprecipitation CHIP Step by Step. I'm going to give you an introduction to CHIP, talk about some of the histone modifications, and present the two most popular CHIP variations. I will also explain CHIP protocol step by step, discussing how to choose an antibody suitable for CHIP. The webinar will finish with some troubleshooting examples. Chromatin immunoprecipitation has become the optimal technique of choice to study chromatin modifications as it can be used to dissect the spatial and temporal dynamics of the interactions of chromatin and its associated factors, including transcription factors and histone modifications. This technique allows to map minute by minute changes of chromatin-associated proteins at a single promoter or to determine their binding sites over the entire human genome. CHEP provides the means to a global analysis of binding events that occur in the living cells, leading to better understanding of regulation of chromatin structure and gene expression. The principle of CHEP is simple. It is the selective enrichment of a chromatin fraction containing a specific antigen. Antibodies that recognize a protein or protein modification of interest can be used to determine the relative abundance of that antigen at one or more location in the genome. Moreover, CHEP can be used to map across loci. In the example presented, AB5131, precipitating RNA polymerase type 2 has been mapped across the gamma actin gene. The enrichment of the polymerase was found in the 5' prime region of the actively transcribed actin. CHIP can also be find application in, quantifi in quantification of protein or protein modification at an inducible gene over a time course. As the name suggests, in CHIP we precipitate chromatin. Chromatin is comprised of histones and DNA. 147 base pairs of DNA chain wrapped around the 8 core histone forms the basic chromatin unit called nucleosome. Each nucleosome contains two subunits with each of histones H2A, H2B, H3 and H4, known as the core histones. The linker histone, H1, does not form part of the nucleosome itself, but it seems to act as stabilizer of the internucleosomal DNA. The primary functions of chromatin are to package DNA into a smaller volume so that it fits in the cell, to strengthen the DNA to allow mitosis and meiosis and prevent chromosome breakage, and to control gene expression and DNA replication. A vast amount of proteins participate in shaping chromatin structure, including histones and other chromatin interacting proteins, such as transcription factors and DNA repair proteins. Chromatin remodeling complexes have the ability of changing the chromatin architecture by modulating the interaction between nucleosomes and DNA, which is often achieved by adding post-translational modifications to histones. In mammals, chromatin is either found as a condensed, transcriptionally silent form called heterochromatin, which constitutes telomeres, pericentric regions, and areas rich in repetitive sequences, or as euchromatin, which instead is less condensed and it can contain most actively transcribed genes. Each of those chromatin states has its own specific epigenetic signature characterized by the level of DNA methylation and histones acetylation and methylation. N and C terminal tails of histones extend from the nucleosome core and various chemical groups can modify their amino acids. Histones are characterized by a large number of post-translational modifications which serve to allocate the genome into active and inactive regions. At least nine types of histone modifications have been described, each catalyzed by a specific set of enzymes. The best understood modifications 
or lysine acetylation, lysine and arginine methylation, serine, threonine and tyrosine phosphorylation, and serine and threonine ubiquitination. Other modifications include citrullination, crotonylation and proline isomerization. In the next two slides, I will discuss the two most widely studied modifications in more detail. Acetylation was one of the first histone modifications described and linked to transcriptional regulation. Acetylation on lysine residues leads to a relaxation of the chromatin structure, allows the binding of transcription factors, and significantly increases gene expression. The enzymes responsible for regulating the acetylation of histone tails are histone acetyltransferases and deacetylases. While all histones can be acetylated, lysine residues within H3 and H4 are preferential target for HAT complexes. Histone acetylation is largely targeted to promoter regions known as promoter localized acetylation. In the example presented here, AB4729 has been used in a CHIP experiment. The enrichment of histone 3 acetylated on lysine 27 has been found on actively transcribed genes such as CAPDH, RPL30 and aldoase A, but not on the silent MyOD, Serpina or IFM as tested by qPCR. Unlike acetylation, histone methylation does not alter the charge of the modified residues and it is therefore less likely to directly alter nucleosomal interactions required for chromatin folding. This may explain why histone methylation can either repress or activate transcription depending on location. Arginine methylation of histone H3 and H4 promotes transcriptional activation whereas lysine methylation of histone H3 and H4 is implicated in both transcriptional activation and repression, depending on the methylation site. In addition, lysine residues can be methylated in the form of mono, di or trimethylation, providing further functional diversity to each site of lysine methylation. For example, Trimethylation on K4 of histone H3 is generally associated with transcriptional activation, whereas trimethylation on K9 or K27 of histone H3 are generally associated with transcriptional repression. A CHIP experiment was performed using the CHIP kit and the E8580 antibody, which precipitates histone H3 trimethylated on lysine 4. Subsequently, the obtained DNA was analyzed by and enrichment of this type of modification has been found on actively transcribed RPL30 as in comparison to the inactive MyOD and Serpina. The enrichment levels were compared to the negative control samples, meaning beats only.